know, Peter, I really love the sim. I do too. He's getting to practice stuff that he doesn't experience in his everyday flying. You know, one of the interesting problems I run into, especially with a simulator like this that's got two Garmin's in it, I end up having to get in and reconfigure the automatic crossbow to manual so I can use my Garmin 2 huh. as a sandbox. Well, what do you mean by sandbox? Sandbox is this loose term a lot of professional pilots like to use when they talk about doing their alternate flight planning in Route 2 or the secondary flight plan. Cool. So just like we do as professional pilots on the A380, in the Cirrus you should do the same thing. You should always use your backup flight plans, load them up, have your backup runways, have your plan of action always loaded into the other uh, waypoints so that if something does happen, you're ready to go. So let's take a look at how to set up the sandbox in a dual configuration. What most people fly with Garmin 1 is their primary navigation Garmin. You do all your active flight planning there, your communications. But a lot of pilots like to fly with Garmin 2 as their sandbox. And when we refer to a sandbox, it's essentially like a scratch pad. It's a great place to do your alternate flight planning, to take a look for errors. Maybe some people like to use it for their backing up their current flight plan or dedicated DME. But in order to use Garmin 2, as a sandbox, you've got to get your crossfill configuration correctly. So let's take a look at the different crossfill setups. What crossfill essentially means is that you're going to copy your active flight plan into the other Garmin and vice versa. The factory default is automatic in both ways, and that essentially means when you make a change to the active flight plan on Garmin 1, that change is immediately seen on Garmin 2. Subsequently, when you make a change to Garmin 2 to the active flight plan, that is immediately copied up to Garmin 1. Another configuration that people like to fly in is auto down and manual up. So when they fly with auto down, they usually like to use that as a backup to the current flight plan. But when they set up their Garmin 2 to manual, that lets them use it as a short term sandbox. And then there's a configuration that I like to fly in and that's manual both ways. And what this essentially means is, Anytime I want to copy my active flight plan to Garmin 2, I manually tell the Garmin to do it. And subsequently, when I'm using my sandbox, which is Garmin 2, and I want to copy the information in the sandbox to Garmin 1, I manually tell the Garmin to do it. The reason for this is I've been bit too many times by automatic crossfill. Let's give you an example. Here is the Van Eyes New All 6 departure with a Daggett transition. And I'm going to fly this on my Garmin 1. And let's just break down the departure for you. You can see here on the New All 6 departure, it's fly runway heading until Van Nuys 2.2 DME. And then essentially you'll go on to a heading of 110. And on a calm morning when there's nobody around, ATC will eventually just say to you, you're clear direct to Palmdale. Now, as most good pilots know, on a hard IFR departure, most professional pilots will set up their takeoff alternate in the sandbox. So as we look here at the new all six departure, here's the Van Nuys Airport. Next to it is Burbank. And the reason Burbank ends up being a great takeoff alternate choice, it's got this beautiful ILS approach that goes right over the top of Van Nuys. So essentially what we're gonna do is fly the departure on Garmin 1, but we're going to have the takeoff alternate in Garmin 2. Let's show you where Crossville can actually cause you a problem. So I take off as normal. And as I reach Van Nuys 2.2 DME, I start my left-hand turn heading 110, and I continue my climb to 4,000 feet. Established on the heading of 110, I check in with SoCal, and it's common on a really quiet, calm morning for SoCal to say something like this to you. Cirrus 8 Alpha Sierra, your radar contact, turn left and proceed direct to Palmdale. This is where automatic crossfill will get you. If I go to Garmin 1, I highlight Palmdale and proceed direct to Palmdale. This blows out my takeoff alternate. So the pro tips are, number one, set up the manual cross fill in whatever configuration you feel that works for you. To set up manual cross fill, either from the flight plan, active flight plan page, or from nav page one, press the menu button. 
From the page menu, simply use the big mover knob or the small changer knob to select crossfill. Once you're in the crossfill page, move on up to the method field in the upper left hand corner. With the method field highlighted, simply change the field from auto to manual and then press enter. Now I'll just simply turn my cursor off and I've been able to change myself from automatic to manual crossfill. And pro tip number two is manual crossfill after any flight plan change. Now one key point I would like to make is when you're using manual crossfill during your flight I actually like to crossfill at certain points from Garmin 1 to Garmin 2. That's the way I fly. I just simply use Garmin 2 as my sandbox and when I'm ready I just simply crossfill from Garmin 2 to Garmin 1. So the pro tips are number one set up the manual crossfill in whatever configuration you feel that works for you. And pro tip number two is manual crossfill after any fight plan change.